What is going on everyone, Sam here. Today I'm gonna to bring you guys something just a little bit different than what I usually do. I've had a lot of people ask me what kind of camera equipment I use for shooting my vlogs. So today I'm gonna to share with you all my different tech and equipment that I use when I film my vlogs at card shows. Now, before we get started, if you guys are new to this channel and you like this content, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button down below, leave a comment, let me know what you think. And also, please subscribe to the channel so you get notifications for new videos when they come out. Also, I wanted to announce that we have a brand new Discord server. The link is in the description down below. You guys can join. We're talking about cards, buying, selling, trading, finding value box deals. Eventually, we're gonna be doing breaks and stuff in there. So make sure to join the Discord. Again, link is down in the description below. So before we get started, one thing I also wanted to mention is that everything that I'm gonna be mentioning today in the video is gonna be linked in the description below. So if you're interested in buying anything, make sure to click on those links. So there's actually two different setups that I use when I shoot videos at card shows. Sometimes I use one, sometimes I use the other, and sometimes I actually use both of them in the same video. So the first setup I'm gonna go through with you is my GoPro setup. And this is the setup that I use when I'm shooting all of my POV stuff. So when I'm digging through value boxes, you get the shot from my chest, and it's a very, very simple setup. I use a GoPro Hero 8, which is this camera right here. I love it. It's very discreet, it has good battery life, shoots good quality video. The thing that I really like about the GoPro is that it's much more discreet than having one of those big cameras. And it's also easier, you just strap it onto your chest and walk around, you get nice clean video. People get to see sort of who you're interacting with and what kind of cards you're seeing from the perspective that you would be seeing it. So as I said earlier, I use a GoPro Hero 8. There's also a 9 and 10, which are both great, but I find the 8 is the most affordable option and does everything that I need it to do and more. So I would recommend if you're looking to get a GoPro, the Hero 8 is definitely a really great choice. Now with the Hero 8, I really only have one accessory and that is the GoPro chest mount. And the chest mount I use obviously to mount the camera onto my chest. I use the official GoPro chest mount, but really any chest mount would work just fine. Now the GoPro setup is super convenient and super easy, but the one thing about the GoPro is I think that the quality of the image is a lot less than when I use my Sony camera. And that's the next thing that I'm gonna talk about. I use for my main vlogging setup, and is what you see at most of the shows and most of the card show vlogs that I do, I use a Sony A6400 APS-C camera. I went with the A6400, but really anything in the A6000 line would be really great. I prefer when I'm vlogging to use an APS-C camera, which for those who don't know is a crop sensor camera. And the reason I prefer the crop sensor camera is they're more lightweight, they're much easier to carry around, and they shoot really, really high quality videos. So for the kind of work that I'm doing in the vlogs, I really don't need anything more than an APS-C camera. And the Sony cameras are one of the best investments you can possibly make into a camera. One thing that you're also gonna need when you're vlogging is a good SD card. I'll leave a link in the description down below to the SD card that I use. I find it to be very trustworthy and make sure if you're filming in 1080p or 4K that you're getting a high enough speed on the SD card so that it can read the information that you're transmitting to it. Now the Sony a6400 or other mirrorless cameras use regular SD cards whereas the GoPro actually uses the micro SD. So make sure for whichever camera you're planning on going with that you get the correct SD card to match the camera. Now when I'm filming my vlogs, I usually film in 30 frames per second at 1080p. I would film in 4K, however, I just find that with my computer not being as powerful as some other computers, I find it much easier to just work with 1080p footage rather than film in 4K and downsample to 1080p. However, if I did have that option, I would probably be filming in 4K and downsampling to 1080p. You can really film in any frame rate you want, 24, 30, 60. I just like 30 the best. It's kind of what I'm used to. I do tend to film more cinematic things in 24 frames per second. Just make sure when you're filming in the different frame rates that you match up your shutter speed to match what frame rate you're filming in. So for my tripod that I use, I use this Mantis pod. I really, really love this tripod, though I will say you don't really need to get that expensive of a tripod. You can get a more affordable version for around 15 to $20. They all work pretty much the same. I love the Mantis pod though, because it's so lightweight. It's so easy to carry around. It's really easy to adjust, so I can make quick adjustments 
with my camera when it's set up. I also really love that it has a quick release system. So if I need to move my camera from my tripod to my camera strap, or maybe even to a gimbal, I can release it really, really fast with the quick release system. I go with the Mantis pod, but again, a tripod is not really something that you need to invest heavily in. For me, I like the Mantis pod, but really any tripod would do just fine. Now with the a6400, I use two different lenses on the camera. The main lens that I use when I'm vlogging is the Sony 10 to 18, which is this lens right here. And I absolutely love this lens. It can go anywhere from 10 millimeters, which is really, really wide angle down to 18 millimeters in case you need a closer up shot. So the reason I love the 10 to 18 is that it's a wide angle lens. It's a great storytelling lens. So when I'm vlogging and filming myself with my tripod, you can see everything that's going on around me. And I really think it helps to capture the environment of the card shows or wherever I'm filming. Now, the other lens that I use is actually the lens that's on my camera right now. And this is the Sigma 16 millimeter F 1.4 lens. Now the Sigma is also a great lens Though I don't prefer it for vlogging for two reasons. One, because it's a pretty heavy lens, so carrying it around all day is tough. And also I find that the 16 millimeter isn't quite wide enough for the vlogging that I'd like to do. In order for me to get the shot that I want, I have to hold the camera out really, really far away. And so I just prefer to use the Sony 10 to 18 when I'm vlogging. However, for stuff like this, where I have a tripod and I can set up my Sigma, I prefer the Sigma lens because you get that nice blurry cinematic background. And I also think the, the image quality is a little bit sharper than on the Sony 10 to 18. Another thing to know about this lens is it does not have what's called optical steady shot. And with the Sony a6400, it doesn't have in-body image stabilization. So when you're vlogging or carrying around your camera and you don't have a lens with optical steady shot, you kind of get those micro jitters. Whereas the Sony 10 to 18, does have optical steady shot. So it's a little bit of a better combination with my Sony a6400. So moving on from lenses, the only other thing that I really use on my vlogging setup is the Rode Wireless Go 2, which is my audio. I absolutely love the Rode Wireless Go 2. It comes with two of these receivers and one transmitter. The transmitter connects directly to the camera and the receivers connect to your body or your person and it's able to capture audio from a distance wirelessly. And in combination with the Rode Wireless Go 2, I use the Rode Lav Mic, which is the microphone that I have attached right here. So while the Rode Wireless Go 2 does actually have a microphone built into the transmitter, I find that one, it peaks a little bit too easy, so the mic's a little bit hot. And also it's just a little bit more discreet when you have the lav mic. So you're not having this big thing clipped onto your lapel or whatever you're clipping it onto. Now, I think the absolute best feature of the Rode Wireless Go 2 is not only the fact that it has two transmitters, so when I'm interviewing people, I can make sure that I get good audio from both people, but also the fact that each one of the receivers actually records locally. So when I'm using my GoPro in my POV setup, I usually take one of the receivers and I have all the audio recorded onto the receiver itself, and then I'm able to just line up the audio and post. For those who have used GoPros before, you know that attaching accessories to them is, can be a rather difficult task. So the fact that I can record the audio locally on my Rode Wireless Go 2, and then later sync it up in post makes it just so easy. So I think that about wraps it up for my vlogging equipment that I used. Once again, if you guys liked the video, I'd appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up and also leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. As always, you know what to do. Please subscribe to the channel, join the Discord down below. Once again, links to everything that I talked about in this video will be down in the description below. If you have any questions, please be sure to leave a comment or reach out to me on Instagram at srothcasino. And I will see you guys next time and happy vlogging.